You know, I talk a lot about being honest with yourself about what you want. And if you're somebody that's watching this and you have no clue what you want, I'm going to say that's total bullshit. I think you've probably decided that either you can't have it because you don't think you're smart enough or good enough or worthy enough, or maybe you think you're too old, or you've told yourself that you can't make a living doing it. Both are complete and utter lies that you're telling yourself. What you need to do is ask yourself this. If you took money off the table, if you didn't give a shit what anybody else thought, what's the thing you would love to be doing with your life? Seriously. Do you dream of being a professional photographer? Do you want to open your own restaurant? Have you always thought about traveling the world and entertaining kids with uh, your juggling skills? I don't know. It's your life. You get to choose what you want to do. Be honest with yourself. What is it that you would want to do with your life if you didn't have to pay the bills doing it? Another thing you can ask yourself, who do you find yourself sort of envious of? You know, like you look at their life and you just think, gosh, how awesome that they get to do that. Well, once you have that answer for yourself, you've gotten really honest, you've pushed the bullshit aside and you've really asked it for yourself and answered the question honestly, all you got to do is explore it. That's it. Just find one thing that you can do to enrich and expand your knowledge about it. Find one course online, Google the topic, stalk people that are pursuing this line of work. That's how you start to do it, one step at a time. So start with answering the question, what do you really want, with a massive dose of honesty. Google the topic and find one thing that you can do, just one, push yourself and start to explore it. If you were to wake up and do that every single day, spend 10 minutes a day, you would be startled, astonished by what your life looks like in a matter of a year or two. I think you should chase what energizes you. Everyone okay. talks about passion, legacy, purpose, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. The one word to pay attention to is energy. I love that. That's it. Let's simplify this. Okay. So whatever energizes you, mm. naturally expands you, feels like possibility, is exciting to do. It may be scary. That doesn't matter. It has to do with how it makes you feel. Right. When you were in your 20s, money made you feel good. It expanded you. It energized you. Chasing the money, that was the game. That was your passion. That was your... Per There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And I particularly want to say that to the women that are watching. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Because it is socialized into women not to chase success like that. Not to go after the money. And so if what energizes you is amassing wealth, go for it. But what ha and 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 the reason why I say that is because people talk about the word passion yeah. or purpose, right? And the truth is, it's not a person, place, or a thing. It's not. It is the feeling of being expanded and energized. Right. I if love you're that. pursuing your passion, it means that you wake up every day and are energized. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to think. What's my purpose? What's my passion? What's my purpose? What's my passion? I don't know. Yeah. Instead of thinking like that, I want you instead to ask yourself, what's what could I do today that would energize me? What energizes me? If it's making money, figure out how to make money. Right. If it is making a difference, figure out how to make a difference. It could be in any single shape or form. But if it energizes you, that's what you need to follow. And what happens is that passion also, because it's energy, it dissipates over time. Because when you first start making money, it's f***ing thrilling. Yeah, yeah. But what happens is once you learn how to do something once, you can do it over and over again. And so it starts to become routine, yeah. which means it's no longer energizing. Right. Which is why every entrepreneur out there goes through the mode of chasing the money and then you hit the money that you need to make. And then you're like, I'm not fulfilled. What's yeah. my purpose? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, I went through I that. I need to find the light. You know, I did the, everybody yeah, does. Yeah. And it's because you were energized by the money and now you're not. Yeah. Now you got to be energized by the next thing. Yeah. And for you, it's clearly service. It's clearly yeah. making a difference. It's empowering others. And so... When I look back on my trajectory, yeah. the thing that energizes me is making people feel like they matter. Oh, yeah. It's that simple. It is giving people hope in a situation where they don't have it. 
it is shining a light on the path forward when somebody feels stuck in darkness. And now that I know that those moments are the things that make me get up out of bed and energize me, I can trace back all the way to the moment of being a public defender in Manhattan, 22 years wow. old, straight out of law school, yeah. defending a kid who, and I met him for the first time, he had been arrested. I met him during night court in New York City. I was a brand new young attorney. This kid had been arrested. He had been arrested for throwing a champagne bottle in the middle of Times Square on New Year's Eve, and it had come down on a woman and had sliced her face open. Oh my God. And he had been ID'd and pointed at by her friends as allegedly the kid who had done it. And he was a junior in high school. High school kid on his way to go to junior college. Mom working hard, terrified, absolutely terrified. And I met him because he had been arrested and you know the family couldn't afford a lawyer and I was a legal aid criminal defense attorney and I was assigned to represent him. And I remember walking back into the cages behind the, the judge's bench, because if you look at a, at a judge in a courtroom, there's two doors typically, mm -hmm. to the, one to the right, one to the left. One of those doors leads to the hallway, which is what all the court officers and administrative workers walk to that's behind the court system. The other one leads to cages that are behind the judge, which is where they hold the inmates as they're waiting to come in and get arraigned or they're waiting you know, for right. the trial. And so I walked back there and I called out this kid's name and I just remember him asking, is my mom out there? Is my mom out there? And I said, look, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna make you two promises. I'm gonna get you out of here tonight and I'm gonna do everything I can. He, it was like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. I swear to God, I didn't do it. And um, I promised him, I said, I'm gonna get you out of here tonight and I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to clear your name. And I remember the relief in his face. And he yeah. said, you believe me? I said, of course I believe Gave him you. hope. Holy shit. That moment, my heart blew open. And it's those moments where you give somebody hope, where you show them the path forward where you're stronger and clearer in that moment than they are, so now they can be. Yeah. And that's what I show up and do every single day. This was about 14 or 15 years ago. So we're talking 2007, 2008, correct? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Jamie Kern Lima is the reason why we have this real beauty movement. There always has to be the first person, and she was it. So when you look around the, the internet and social media and you see people doing naked faces, that was not something people did in 2007. It was all airbrush. It was all perfection. That was the beauty standard. There were no plus size or curvy models. That was not a thing back then. And so you've got a woman who is sitting in Seattle, who has no experience and no money, deciding that she is going to not only figure out how to create a makeup line for people who have issues with their skin, but that she's going to do something nobody has ever done, which is put real normal people like you and me into her campaigns when she finally gets this figured out. And she's going to show people what her skin actually looks like in order to sell it. I mean, that was a revolutionary idea. She was the first, and I'm telling you this because you could be the first. You have something inside of you that is a problem, something that you can solve, and you could be the first to change the way that people think about an issue. And so, Jamie, let's pick up the story because how do you go from this aha moment like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, to doing something because yes. I think some of us have aha moments right yep and then we, but we don't him. do anything <laughs> yes because we doubt him we yes. doubt him we think like oh someone's already done it yes or oh whatever first of all if you're out there right now and you think oh you have an idea or or a way you want to show up in the world or 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 someone else you you know uh, you want to help but you think oh someone's already done it literally there's only one of you in the entire universe which by definition means no one has ever done it the way you're going to do it mm. so when I launched this say that again Jamie <laughs> for the people that are like whoa whoa, whoa kids Calm down. Uh, I, wait, Jamie just said something. I was doing my dishes. Say that again. Talk about the fact that this matters. This is 
huge because I think the biggest reason we talk ourselves out of things is we think, oh, someone's already done it. Yes. Someone's already done it before, you know, who must be smarter than me or more talented or more whatever it is than me. And, and what I have learned and then proven, and I want to tell you too about all, I'm going to get so excited, Mel, because <laughs> no, when you do this thing, like don't be shocked then when there's millions and millions of rejections and people don't get it, right? Um, uh, uh, because it's never been done before, right? Oh, yes. Because there's only one of you. There's only one of you doing it the way you're going to do it. But, but just to recap that, there is literally only one of you in the entire universe, right? And so if you are going to show up to this world authentic, that means... Whatever you do, if it's authentic to you, it's actually, by definition, it's never been done before, Mm. right? And so when you show up that way, don't be surprised if not everyone gets it right away. Or, you know, in my case, all the experts I put on pedestals all said no, that this idea of of, of how I wanted to um, connect with women, they thought it wouldn't work and they thought I wouldn't therefore make them any money. Um, So, but can I ask you a question real quick? How did you go from the uh aha? Yes to starting. So what did that look like? Like, cause I think like if you're in this space where, you know, let's just use an example. You've never actually, you don't know the first, you, you, you have this thing about catering that you just can't get it out of your head. You want to do these events. You want to, you've never actually done this because you had never done anything with makeup. You had no idea what you were doing. You have an idea and you have an aha moment. Mm-hmm. What was the first thing that you did to start to make this real? So leaning on that, why I had to do it mm-hmm. and why it felt like it was going to be part of my purpose was mm-hmm. a big thing that helped me actually take the risk, quit my job. Wait, and... you quit your job because you had an aha moment? Yeah, it was deep. I was like, if I had... What did all... it feel like? It felt like, um, It felt like if I didn't do it, I would wake up the rest of my life with this pain in my gut, this longing knowing I was created for more. Um, It felt like if I didn't do it, I would have the pain of regret. Mm. And if I did do it, I might have the pain of failure and maybe the pain of embarrassment and then maybe the pain of, oh, wow, that wasn't, that doesn't feel like it went how I thought it was. You know, I knew it was this big risk. I knew I was leaving what I thought was my dream job. Why did you Um, have to quit your job? Just curious. It was literally from day one, I was all in. Like it was, I dove all in. I knew if I was going to do this, I needed to just go all in on it. Um, And, you know, I I started, I do not recommend this, but I started working like 100 hour weeks from the beginning. I was so freaking passionate about it. Like I couldn't stop thinking about what if I can actually figure this out. What if I can literally, because it, it, it became a big So did dream. you have any savings? Like, do you have a little bit Very of savings? Very little savings. Because you didn't pay yourself for the first three years that you did this. First three years. So basically, my husband and I wrote this business plan, right? Yep. Um, quit our jobs, dove all in in our living room. We poured all of our savings into it. I thought, Mel, and this is this is for someone watching us right now. I know this. I thought if I can figure the product out, it's going to be huge. Right. And then I realized like, oh, being an entrepreneur or, or, or launching a dream is not always that easy. We poured every penny we had into it. And I, it, once we actually created a product, by, and we were scrappy. If you and how know did you how, create a product? Like are you in your yeah. kitchen buying stuff at the grocery store? Or how does this even work? Okay. So no. So, so first, um, I love that, you know, technology is right there, right? So, so researching how are makeup formulations made? Who makes them? What are the FDA regulatory compliance? All the unsexy stuff I know nothing about just diving into the research phase of how does this happen. And then what I learned is that uh, manufacturers are, are, are makeup companies' closest held secrets, right? Like closest held secrets. They won't disclose who they work with, but hmm. a lot of these big manufacturers work with all the top brands that you see or a handful of them. Gotcha. So, so I started. So are you saying that all of the brands and top brands that you see are basically manufactured by a handful of companies? Yes, handful okay, of companies. It. And then some do it in-house as well. Gotcha. Um, so what I did was scrappy. I walked into a Sephora. I wrote down the name of every single brand in there, <laughs> went home. You know, I had no money, right? Cold call every single brand and saying like, oh, 
um, I'm looking for a really great manufacturer. Could you let me know who you manufacture? And then they hang up on me. You know what I mean? One after another, after another, after another. And I got this really small brand in a totally different kind of positioning where the girl who answered said, oh, here's who we use. They're in New York City, blah, blah, blah. So that was my first manufacturer. Reached out to them, had a meeting in person, uh, had no money, poured this idea out to them. They took a, a risk making me samples. Uh, and that's how it started, was just really being scrappy um, and, and trying to figure it out. All of our money had went into uh, the product development formula and the yep. advisory board of the product. Yep. And I thought, okay, now we have a product that works for me, right? This was after hundreds of formula iterations. I thought that was going to be it. So is this like year one or year two? Like how long did this take? Yeah, it took a, a good first year to okay. get that product. And then what I started doing was sending it to everyone I thought was just going to believe in me instantly. So I sent it to Sephora and, and, and Ulta Beauty and all the department stores and all of the online retailers, QVC, which is, you know, live television shopping channel. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be huge. Every single one of them said no after no, after no, after no. And to your point, it became three years of not being able to pay myself, three years of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of no's, of crying myself to sleep at night. Were you and your um, husband like fighting like crazy, like you should go back to work, you should, but why do we do that? Like, were you like doing you, that? You want to know what it was? Yeah. We still believed in it, but we weren't sure how we were going to make it. It was like friends and family that were like, uh, wait, you quit your job? Are you sure you should have quit your job? Or wait, you still haven't made any money? Like it's been three years, right? So you hear all of this, the voices get so loud. Yeah. Um, the loudest though were my own self-doubt. You know, sometimes we take a chance and go for something because our gut is telling us to do it. And then all of a sudden you face all this opposition and you start to question, is my gut wrong? Is my knowing wrong? And there were so many times where I would literally get this, another brutal no from, you know, Sephora or QVC or whoever it was. And I would just literally cry myself to sleep. Um, I would pray about it and be like, God, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing this, but nothing is going right. So let's just pause in that moment because I get a lot of questions from listeners who because of the things that have happened in their past, yeah. they don't know how to trust their intuition. Yeah. And I get a lot of questions about decision making and how to truly, in a situation like this, where you are burning through your entire life savings, yeah. you have left your dream job, you have gotten no after no after no after no after no. How do you stay connected? to your intuition in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. What what tool do you have or what advice can you give to somebody who's having trouble hearing what the right decision is mm -hmm. in that kind of situation? Yeah. So I think that intuition is like a muscle that we build mm -hmm. um, over time. And I think it's a lifelong journey that, you know, to really learning how to hear it and to trust it. And one of the greatest tools I think is to uh, go back, think back to times in your life where maybe you had this gut feeling to do something and everyone around you said, don't do it. So you listen to them. You didn't trust yourself. And then think about what happened. Right. And then similarly, go back to a time where everyone was like, oh, uh, uh, no way, no way. And you're like, but I love him. I don't think he's lying. I think his <laughs> phone really did break five times every weekend. He didn't disappear his phone. Like, right. Think about like that situation when everyone was telling you something and 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 you didn't listen or even your gut was telling you right and you didn't listen and you think back to those times and you start to develop pattern recognition mm. um of how it felt in moments in your life when you trusted yourself or didn't and what happened and you get better attuned to what that feels like so what does it feel like for you I in feel, both situations like can you describe what it feels like for you when you're like yep no that's a no Yes. And what does it feel like for you when you're like, I'm sticking with this? Yeah. Often it's the tiniest of feelings in my gut, right? Some people describe it as like a still small voice. I pray about it. I ask God to give me the answers and I try to live the answers. Do you feel the answers that God gives you? Like, is that what happens for you when you do this? Like right now when I look at you, right? Yeah. Like I know you're a beautiful soul, right? I just know it. You know it. You feel it. Like I feel like you have good, like you're good. 
You know what I mean? It's a yeah. feeling, right? And and we get these feelings, but so much around us is so loud, hmm. you know? And we just learn over time. And by the way, not to go, this could be a whole other episode, but especially as women from the time we're young, we learn not to trust ourselves. We we, we walk in to our parents fighting and we go, is everything okay? They're like, everything's great. Everything is great, right? To protect us, we start to learn to You're doubt like, ourselves, baloney. right? Yep. But uh-huh. you know, or, you know, especially as young girls, you learn to make decisions by consensus mm. often with your friends. And or you, making other people happy. And making other people happy. Uh, people pleasing. We're rewarded for, for, for pleasing everyone else and, and almost ignoring what we feel. So, so if you're someone who's an adult right now going, I don't even know how to hear my own gut or trust myself. That's why <laughs> we've been trained out of learning how to do it, right? So it takes intentionality and really um, deciding, oh, you know what? I'm going to put in some time, even if it's five minutes a day, just to thinking about moments in my life where I trusted myself or I didn't. Um, and if you don't remember any of them, start now. You know what you just inspired me to think about? Hmm. I don't even know if it's possible to do this. But imagine if you could go through the rest of today and only make decisions that align with what you truly want. Mm, If you don't want to go to that party tonight, don't go. If a friend asks you something and you feel obligated out of guilt to lend them that thing, don't actually lend them the thing. Eat what you want to eat tonight for dinner. Don't just go to wherever your friends want to go. Like, I think that would be a real eye-opening experiment if you were to do that. And you start building that muscle, right? And the more you do that, some some people don't even pay attention to what they actually want to eat for dinner. They're just like, what sounds good to everyone? But to your point, when you start paying mm. attention, then you also start building that knowing of hearing your own knowing. Do you think it's possible to discover your unique purpose in life if you are not connected and listening to your intention? And in, intuition, I mean. And your own intuition. Here's how I think it's. I think it's way more likely, and 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 you're gonna actually discover more than one purpose mm. often if you're really tuned in to your intuition and 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 you're intentional about it. But what I'll say for someone who feels like they can't hear their gut, but they still want to find their purpose, um, uh, a friend of mine, Rory Vaden, says that your 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 best position to serve the person you once were. Right. Um, uh, Trent Shelton, our friend, says says one day the things you're going through right now will be the things you made it through. Yeah. And what I would say to someone listening right now is look at something in the past that has broken your heart, that has caused you grief, that has been something uh, that you care deeply about, whether it's mm-hmm. positive or negative, that you've gone through something you care deeply about, um, or maybe pain you've gone through, something you have made it through. I believe often when we go through the hardest times in our life, yep. it's for one of two reasons. What are they? It is to either equip us with the strength we need to carry the weight of our success that's to come, mm. to carry the weight of our purpose that's to come, or we've gone through these horrible, unspeakable times, things we would never want to happen to us again in our life because we're actually going to get our greatest source of fulfillment and purpose by one day helping someone else who's going through them. And I love that saying that you're best equipped to help the person you used to be. Yes. If you are somebody who is struggling to figure out what your passion is in life, um, this coffee talk is for you. If you have a friend or a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew who is struggling to figure out what their passion is, they don't know what to do with their life, this coffee talk is for them and you should absolutely share it with them. Um, So let's talk about passion. You know, passion is a really interesting topic because most of us have the wrong definition of passion. And for a long time, I did too. You know, I get asked all the time, Gina uh, put a question on Instagram because on Wednesday or on Friday, which was our last uh, live broadcast, um, we were talking all about um, 
energy and about your inner compass. And uh, Gina said, you know, Mel, I'm really figuring, I'm really struggling to figure out what my purpose is. I have too many talents. How do I find my place in the world? Sorry, I just heard this loud noise, so I didn't know what it is. And I'm in a hotel, so I'm sure people are not happy with the fact that I am doing a live broadcast. So I'm going to keep my voice down just a little bit to be respectful of the people around me. Um, so if you're struggling to find your passion, why don't you give me a thumbs up? Because this broadcast and this live training in Coffee Talk with Mel Robbins is going to give you the tools that you need in order to think about passion differently. And that's the problem. You see, the problem with passion is that you and I have bought into this massive fantasy world where we think that passion is a person or a place or a thing that somehow like a needle in a stay has in a, a needle in a haystack that you are somehow just going to stumble into the thing and you're going to find that one person or you're going to find that one thing that you're meant to do or you're going to find that career and honestly we got to change the way that you think about passion and purpose before you will actually be able to bring it into your life. Because the truth is, passion isn't in a person, it isn't in a place, and it isn't in a thing. It's something inside of you. And when you flip the definition of what passion is, and when you actually understand what you're looking for when you say, I want to discover my passion, then you'll be able to create more of it in your life. Okay, so let me give you a new definition of what passion is. You ready? Let me tell you what Gina's actually asking about when she says, I'm struggling to figure out my purpose and my passion. You ready? Here's your new definition of passion. Passion is simply energy. That's all that it is, okay? Passion is what you feel when you are energized and excited about what you're doing, okay? I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to think about a moment in time when you felt incredibly passionate about something, okay? And why don't you in the comments tell me where are you watching from and tell me about a moment in time when you felt incredibly passionate about what you were doing, about where you were, about the people that you are with, describe that moment for me. Because when you start to really investigate passion as energy, this is what you're going to discover. Those moments when you were super passionate, like I'm sure my kids would write down when they're doing community theater with all their friends. I would write down whenever I'm doing any kind of creative project with my team, I'm incredibly energized. Whenever I'm doing group exercise stuff, climbing a mountain, uh, doing a 5k race, doing some sort of walk-a-thon. I'm incredibly energized by that. Whenever I'm um, doing some sort of creative project, incredibly energized by that. Whenever I'm working with our video team, incredibly energized by that. Whenever I am coaching someone or giving advice, I am incredibly energized by that. And so what I want you to understand is that if you look back on your life, you have had moments where you have felt passion. Now, I'm being very deliberate in how I'm talking this morning on Coffee Talk because passion is a huge topic for so many of you. And you've been so focused on trying to figure out what job is going to make me uh, passionate. What job is my passion? What is my purpose on the earth? I'm going to tell you what your purpose on earth is right now. Your purpose on earth is to figure out how to align your life so that you feel more energized and excited by it. That's it. And it begins with you following the energy and following your natural enthusiasm. You're not going to think your way to passion. You can't think your way to finding something that you feel in your heart. It doesn't work that way. You got to feel your way into it. It's inside of you. Do you understand? There's no passion out there somewhere. The passion is in here. And so what you have to do first is you've got to stop thinking that you're going to find it somewhere. And you've got to realize that passion is about unlocking something that's already in you. And so here's the thing. So for those of you that have been watching Coffee Talk for a while, or you've read the Five Second Rule book, or maybe you used the Five Second Journal, or maybe you took Mindset Reset with us this January, 
You've probably heard me talk about the fact that inside of you there is power. You have an inner compass and that inner compass is always guiding you and learning how to read that inner compass is essential if you want to unlock the passion that's already naturally inside you. Passion again isn't a person, place, or thing that you're going to find. It is a state of being that you unlock inside of yourself and it is there and you can tap into it right now. So there is an inner compass inside of you that I call an energy gauge. It's an energy gauge that reads the energy in you and around you. And that energy gauge goes from moments when you feel depleted, dead, and empty to moments where on the other side of the gauge, you feel energized, alive, expanded. And so the truth is your natural state, believe it or not, is to be on the energized, expanded side of the internal compass that's in you. And so you are never really lost. I'm telling you this. I know you may feel lost. I know you may feel defeated. I know you may feel depleted. I know you may feel stuck. These are all temporary states. And one of the fastest ways for you to start to change how you feel about where you are in your life is to tune inward and to start to read the energy because if you feel stuck, your natural energy is depleted. If you feel despair, your natural energy is depleted. And the fastest way to start to shift that is to shift the energy inside you and to start to align your life towards things that energize you, okay? Things that excite you. And if you look at your life and you're like, oh my God, I don't know anything that excites me. I don't know anything that energizes me. Don't despair. I have something that you can do today that will help you to start to align your life in small ways towards things that naturally energize you. Um, many of you know that um, I'm a huge partner of Audible's and we have just released a brand new Audible original project called Take Control of Your Life. You don't need to buy it if you're interested in it. It's called Take Control of Your Life. It's six coaching sessions. It's 10 hours long. There's a bazillion takeaways. And in the first coaching session, I talked to a guy named Dan who felt really stuck. He knew what he was passionate about. He didn't know how to follow it. If you don't know what you're passionate about, listening to the session will help you figure it out. But more importantly, your body knows what you're passionate about. Because all you have to do is start asking yourself, do I want to take a class in wine tasting? Do I want to take a class in gardening? Do I want to take a class in video production? Do I want to take a class in in painting? Do I want to take a class in accounting? Do I, and whatever it is that your body's like, ooh, that sounds cool. That's what naturally energizes you because you reacted positively to it with enthusiasm, with excitement. I also talk about this, by the way, in Amy's session because Amy has no clue what her dream or her passion is, just like you might not have any clue. And so I asked her the questions I'm going to ask you. What energizes and excites you? And when you start to anchor the process of leaning into and opening up the passion inside you by asking yourself questions. What energizes me? What excites me? What are the things in my life that I have always been interested in? Who am I jealous of? What would I do for free? What do I want to learn more about? All these questions are about unlocking your natural curiosity, your natural energy, your natural enthusiasm. If you're in a bookstore, what topics do you naturally gravitate towards? When's the last time you felt energized? What are the things that come so easily to you? Inside of the answers to those questions, by the way, are everything that you need to know about unlocking more of a feeling of energy and excitement. You're not searching out there for it. You're looking for clues internally as to what gets awakened inside of you when you pursue things that energize you. So again, your new definition of passion, passion is not a person, place, or thing. Passion is the energy that you feel when you're excited, when you're expanded, when you're learning new things. And so you got to stop thinking about it and you've got to start feeling your way into it. I want to cover kind of seven really common mistakes that everybody makes. I have made these mistakes. The people that I love make these mistakes. I'm going to talk a lot about my two daughters in this training because um, purpose and passion is a big conversation with them right now. 
Everybody that I follow makes these mistakes. Brendan has made these mistakes. And I think when you unpack the mistakes that you're making, it's easy to then do a few simple things to start moving in the right direction. And so that's how we're going to unpack passion and purpose. Let's start with the seven common mistakes because oftentimes it's easier to stop doing something than it is to start doing something. And so there are seven things I want you to stop doing. And when you stop doing this, it's gonna make it easier for you to tap into and uh, really tap into purpose and passion. So what is mistake number one? Mistake number one is that you think passion and purpose are the same thing. I hear those two words thrown around so much and swapped in and out of sentences that I need to say it is a major mistake to think that passion and purpose are the same thing. Because the fact is they're completely different. And the other fact is you need both passion and purpose in order to live an incredible life that you deserve to live. So let me unpack my simple way of thinking about passion versus purpose. So passion is something you feel. I think about passion as another word for energy. Passion is something you feel. Purpose on the other hand is something you do. Purpose is something you do. I'm going to distinguish passion and purpose at a secondary level. You ready? So passion is something you feel. Passion describes the energy that you feel. And the other cool thing about passion is passion is for you. Passion is simply anything that makes you feel more energized in life. I'll give you an example. And I want you to think about what is something that brings passion into your life. And as you think of the thing that brings passion into your life, share it. Because when you share something that you're thinking, it always ignites and empowers and inspires somebody else that's watching this too. So for example, passion is for me. Passion is what I feel. Passion is the stuff that brings energy into my life. So here's my passion. You ready? I love to garden. I love to walk into a flower store. I love to savor a fabulous cup of coffee. I love and am passionate about watching stand-up comedy. I am passionate about hiking. I am passionate about, um, oh, I'm actually passionate about the polar plunge challenge and like, you know, doing cold exposure therapy. I'm passionate about getting together with our kids. I'm passionate about walks on the beach. I am energized by making plans to go somewhere. I am energized by cooking. All of these things that I'm listing are things that I do or things that I think about that infuse me with this energy. That's what passion is. And you need that in order to live an awesome life. And passion is so simple to bring into your life because passion is literally just about getting intentional about filling your time with things that bring you energy. It kind of makes sense, right? That's all the passion is. And now that you understand this simple idea of what passion is, that it's something you feel, it's for you, it brings energy into your life, you now understand why people say, oh, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm living my passion. I would never use that sentence because I think the accurate thing is I feel passionate about my work as a doctor. What they're saying when somebody says that is, is they're saying, I feel energized by my work. And if you are one of the 89% of people that feel stuck right now, here's what I know. If you look at your day to day and your week to week life, you are not doing anything that naturally brings energy into your life, positive energy. And a simple way to flip the switch and bring more passion into your life is to become intentional about making time to do the things 
Like Marianne, she's passionate about running, designing, chilling with her friends, connecting with people, helping connect people in business, nature, sunrises, so many things. Even writing the things, did you guys notice? Even writing down what brings energy into your life actually makes you feel more energized. So that's what passion is. Purpose is something you do and purpose is what you do for the world. Purpose is this anchor that you attach yourself to. And it is the thing that you do for the world. It's how you show up for other people. It is the reason why you're doing things. It's sort of like, I'm going to give you another example. We've got the anchor because when you're connected to why you do what you do, you will not feel adrift. Okay. But I'm going to give you another example about purpose. So have any of you ever had a situation where you're like near a body of water and you either have your dog or somebody else's dog and that dog runs into the water or the pond or the river or the muddy stream or the swimming pool and then they come out and they shake, 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 shake all over you and the water spreads everywhere, right? I also feel that purpose is that stuff that naturally shakes off you and hits other people. So I, for example, in the exchange that you just saw, uh, with me talking with Brendan, when Brendan's around me and he's like the dog shaking wet, what you get hit with is his purpose of serving, right? It just flies from the guy because it's what he gives to the world. And when you understand that purpose is just why you're doing something and how you're showing up for it and this, and the way in which you uniquely do it, that's your purpose. That's it. Passion is for you. Purpose is what you give to other people. So mistake number one, is that you think they're the same thing. You use the words interchangeably. You're not quite thinking about the difference and why both are so important. Now let's jump into mistake number two. Mistake number two, I've sort of hinted at already. Mistake number two is you think you're just going to bump into it. You think that purpose or passion just kind of happens. That's not true. The biggest thing that people don't realize myself included is that it's something you have to be super intentional about that when you wake up every day, you have an opportunity to bring passion into your life. You have an opportunity to decide how you're going to show up with a sense of purpose today. And this lack of intentionality is the reason why you feel stuck. It's the reason why you feel adrift. If you're on autopilot, if you're just going through the motions, if you're accepting good enough, if you're just barely surviving, you're not anchored to anything and you're not going to just sort of float into what's meant for you. You need to have what I call a wake up moment. You got to have a wake up moment and go, I'm stuck. And I'm sick of it. And, and being stuck, by the way, is a great thing. It's a wake up moment. Cause you just woke up and we're like, you know what? I I'm, I'm not feeling connected to something deeper here. I need to fix this. And so mistake number two is thinking you're just going to bump into it. That somehow staying on autopilot, blah, 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 blah. It's not gonna, that's not going to happen. You got to make a decision that you're going to become intentional about infusing your day-to-day -day life with more passion and that you're going to become intentional about aligning your focus, your attention, and your actions on something that you value. That's how it's going to happen. Any decision can be de 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 divided into what do I need to do versus how and when do I need to do it. For the what, that is intuition. And by intuition, I use the word energy. And 
the way to answer any question for yourself personally that you don't immediately know the answer to is to ask this question. Does it energize and expand my life or does it shrink it? If it energizes and expands your life, the answer is hell yes. You should absolutely do it. That is what you should do. If the decision shrinks you or it deflates you, then the answer is hell no, you should not do it. This is an incredible tool to use in deal making, by the way, because uh, you know I'm in the middle of negotiating a, a massive media deal at the moment, and it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And um, when you're negotiating for something you really want, whether it's somebody that you're dating, or you know it's a salary, or whatever. It may, in my case, it's a massive media deal. Um, you can get really ego driven. Right? right, and you can start to get very attached to the deal or to the person or yeah. to the whatever. But you have to stop and ask yourself: Is this deal or this person actually expanding right. and energizing mm. me, or, or are there aspects of it that deplete and shrink me? And if there's any aspect of it that depletes and shrinks, you either have to change that aspect of the deal or the relationship structure, or you have to say no. Period. Right. If you decide that, yeah, it energizes me and I really want to do it, then that's what you want. Next, you've got to think about the outcome, which is how and when you make it happen. Right. What kind of business do you have? I have a photography business. Fantastic. And, uh, and, and I've, on my website, I've taken over 100,000 pictures. Wow. And I typically go to events, just like I have at least 20 pictures of you at a, of a success conference when you when you kept coming out awesome. <laughs> at, at that event. Yeah. And so, and so therefore, uh, I need to fi figure out a way to monetize that. Cause, cause have I, you submitted them to stock uh, sites? No. I That's haven't. how you're going to monetize them. Okay. Because I do media uh, and, and I ask questions and I take pictures. And, and that's what I do, but there's... So then let me, let me tell you something. A big mistake that we make as entrepreneurs is we think that we've got to build everything ourselves. And what's super cool about business today is that there are channels where you can make money mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do things that are outside your core expertise. You're a photographer. You're amazing at it. You're a networker. I can already tell. You're amazing at it. What you should never ever do mm -hmm. is spend time building a stock photography site because that is not your core capability. Okay. But if you just focus on taking photos, which you love, mm -hmm. and you upload the stuff that you're not gonna monetize some other way to a stock photography site, as mm -hmm. long as it's not other, you know, it's not as long as, you know, you've got the rights to it and everything else, mm -hmm. you can make money on that stuff all day long. And in fact, because so many people are creating content, the stock photography sites have exploded. It's not just Getty and Stocklist and some of the other ones that a ton of people use. There are, there are tons of them out there. And so that's one thing that you should be doing. Okay. Where else do you want to grow your business? I want to make sure I'm able to do that first step very well before I progress on to the, to the next phase. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't want to do so many different things that I'm not doing each one of them very well. That's right. So anything where you're going to have to learn a new skill and somebody else has done it and you can outsource it, mm -hmm. just like uploading to stock sites, mm -hmm. that is, you don't want to make the mistake of having your attention go off the ball, which is creating a big library of photos mm -hmm. and building something that you have no interest in building. Thank you so, so, so much. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Tell me about the next level. The next level. For the, your business. For, for my business. The next two years, I do media. I, I, I get media passes and I go to concerts. Go to events. Gotcha. And I go to events and I, and I ask questions. And are they paying you? to? Mm -hmm. So the next step is that you're not getting the, because right now it sounds like you're in the stage where you're getting the tag to go and shoot. Correct. And you're building a portfolio. Yes. The next step is to get paid to show up, to shoot for people. So what I want you to say now, the next time somebody asks you, so in order to time travel, one of the things that you do is you go ahead two years mm -hmm. and then you figure out, well, what does, what does business look like two years from now? 
and what am I doing differently? What do I say? How do I talk? How do my days go? One major change that will happen two years from now when you reach that level is when people ask you what you do, what you're going to say is, oh, well, I'm an event photographer and I do huge events like sporting events and concerts and South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. That's what my business is. Mm -hmm. And so when you say it that way, I get paid to go to concerts. I want you to then bring it back to today. Mm -hmm. And when people for the rest of the day say, what do you do? Say, well, I'm a, a photographer who is hired to go to big events okay. and shoot them. Okay. And I am here because I want to meet event planners and people in the Austin area that need, they need to hire a photographer for an event. You got it? Yes. You're going to start saying that now. You're going to feel like an imposter. You're going to feel, ooh, what are they going to know? Ooh, what do I charge? I don't know. And do you want an advice on what to charge? $200 an hour. That's great. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Here's another thing you can say. What's your budget? You might be underpricing yourself, especially you just, your eyes, his eyes just went, what do you mean? What do you mean, Mel? You might be underpricing yourself because are you giving the rights to the photos for $200 too? Yes, you are. I can tell based on the fact that the wheels are spinning upstairs because you're thinking, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't be. So what you're going to do is this. I think $200 an hour to start is great mm -hmm. and giving away the rights is totally fine because mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to have a couple people hire you. You want a couple key events. Then you've got those photos, right? Yes. You've got people that love working with you because you're delightful. Thank you. You're welcome. You are. And then what happens over time is you'll have the confidence, having done a bunch of them, mm -hmm. to say there's a $1,000 fee for you to buy out the license to all the photos. And as you bump into more photographers and you get more and more into the space and you do it more and more, you'll have greater confidence to ask for those things and not even flinch. When you get paid 200 bucks an hour, which is great, mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be great for a little while. And then you're gonna be like, wait a minute, if I'm going to give away all the rights to these photos, it's going to have to be more. Okay. But first, get yourself busy working at that rate. And the way that you do it is tell people, I am a photographer that gets paid to photograph events. That's what I do. I am a photographer that gets paid to photograph events. Why don't you look in the camera and tell people that? <laughs> tell people your name and where they can find you. Go ahead. <laughs> I am a photographer that photograph events. My name is Michael Lewis, Austin, Texas. I can be reached at atxdigitalphotography.com. And how much do you charge? Because he, he's not doing this for free. How much do <laughs> you charge? And I'm not doing this for free. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to let you know I'm doing this for $200 an hour. I will give you the rights for now. Could change later, but. Yes, I love hire, it. Hire me now. How does that feel to say that? That <laughs> oh, feels great. See, good. If I were to ask you, what's your passion? Do you know the answer? Most of you are gonna say, no, I, I don't know what my passion is. And while we're on the topic of passion, I bet you're starting to even think, how do you even find your passion? And when it comes to finding your passion, you're making a huge mistake. You're looking for passion in the wrong place. And it's not your fault that you're making this mistake because you were told a lie. You were told you gotta go find your passion. I even remember reading that if you find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. But here's the problem. You've been led to believe that passion is something that you find, that it's like some magical career, or it's an amazing person, or it's a place that you're gonna live, or it's a pursuit. Passion, it's none of those things. Let me tell you the problem with thinking that passion is something that you find. When you think passion is some treasure that's hidden from you, you're gonna spend your whole life looking for something. That's gonna make you feel lost. It's gonna make you feel overwhelmed. It's gonna make you feel confused. So let me show you the way. There's no such thing as finding your passion. You see, passion is not something that you find. Passion is something that you feel. If you're looking to find it, that thing that you were born to do, I want you to stop looking right now. Stop living your life like you're missing some sort of puzzle piece and if you just find it then everything is going to fall into place because passion isn't a person, a place, or a thing. Passion doesn't exist outside of you. You're not going to find it in a job. You're not going to find it on a mountaintop. You're not going to find it in a relationship. You're not going to find it online and you're definitely not going to find it in a fancy hotel on the ocean in the Maldives. 
You want to know where you find it? Look in the mirror. Because passion is just energy. That's it. Passion is something you feel. Passion is not something that you find. Passion is the energy you bring to everything that you're doing. That's all that passion is. That's why you can be miserable making millions on Wall Street, but you can be passionate as hell directing traffic on a runway for a fraction of the money. Because you know what? Passion is not what you do. It's how you do it. So when somebody says, I've discovered my passion, you know what they're really saying? I feel energized when I get up in the morning because I'm excited about how I show up in my life and the energy that I feel when I'm living my life. That's it. Passion is just energy. And that's amazing news because if passion is just energy, then passion is inside of you and you're in complete control of how much energy you bring to everything you do, which means you are in complete control of how you live a more passionate life. That's the secret. So how do you live with more passion? Simple, follow the energy. Stop asking yourself, how do I find it? And ask yourself, how do I bring more energy to my current life and to everything I'm doing right now? And the easiest way to follow the energy? Start by doing things that naturally energize you. And that could mean anything. It could mean sitting in the quiet and reading a book. It could mean talking to an old friend. It could mean working on a new business, even if it isn't successful. Heck, it might just be cranking up the music and singing at the top of your lungs on your commute to work. That's why passion is how you're living, not what you're doing. You see, passion isn't what you're pursuing. It's how you're pursuing it. And that's why I wanted to talk to you. I want you to change how you're living your life right now. Stop waiting until you find your passion to be happy and start bringing positive energy to everything that you're doing today. And you'll start living a more passionate life right now. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for checking this video out. And if you like this one, I have a feeling you're going to like this one too. I'll see you there.